turning around for my good. Everything is turning around for my good. Everything is turning around in my favor. Everything is turning around for my good. I can see everything. It's turning around it. Turning around oh, for my good. I can see everything. Can you see everything? It's turning around oh, I can see everything turning around it. According to the word of the Lord, I can see everything it's turning around. It's turning around it. Everything is turning around for my good. Everything is turning around for my good. Everything is turning around in my favor today. Everything is turning around for my good. I can see everything. Declare it today. It's turning. It's turning. It's turning. I can see everything. It's turning around in my favor today. Hallelujah. I can see everything. I can see everything. It's turning around. See everything. My business is turning around. Hallelujah. I can see everything. I'm receiving sound help today. It's turning. It's turning. Hey, I can see everything. God is changing my level today. See everything. Hey, I can see everything. I can see everything. Hallelujah. Jesus this morning. Come on, come on. Favor is my name, Lord. Lifting is my name. Breakthrough is my name. Say favor is my name. Favor is my name. Favor is my name. Favor is my name. It's turning around you. It's turning around you. Hey, I can see everything. I can see everything. God is changing my levels today. No more decline. I can see everything. See everything. See everything. I can see everything. I can see everything. See everything. Hallelujah. I can see. I can see. I can see. I can see everything. I can see everything. Hey, I can see everything. See everything. See everything. Oh, holy woman. Hallelujah. Oh, holy woman. Oh, holy woman. Oh, holy woman. Oh, holy woman. Oh, <laughs> 
wonderful hands together for Jesus and you can make it bigger and louder yet bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger 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 for Jesus shout hallelujah please you may be seated praise God and this service I call to worship is taken from the book of Psalms chapter 20 and we are reading beginning from verse 1 praise God Psalms chapter 20 verse 1 beginning the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble make that amen a stronger one the name of the God of Jacob defend thee verse 2 church remember all thy offerings and accept thy bond sacrifice together verse 4 We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Shall they believe in amen? amen. Together verse 6. Some trust in chariots and some in horses but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Verse 8. Together, verse 9, the loudest you can want to go. Say, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. You are welcome. My case is different. It is announcement time. Please listen attentively. Number one, praise the Lord. We are reminded that kingdom advancement and divorce is ordained a lifetime task. Therefore, every winner is to keep engaging in kingdom advancement prayers, passionate soul winning, and following up our converts and contacts to the point of establishment. Every winner that continues in his or tireless engagement should expect to keep changing levels supernaturally. Number two, praise the Lord. Friday, the 21st of July, 2017, was the 12th convocation ceremony of Covenant University. The graduating class included 1,125 first degrees, 266 second degrees, and 35 PhDs. Put your hands together for the Lord. For each free operation of the university for the past 15 years and the numerous awards received, a special Thanksgiving session is holding at Covenant University Chapel today. To God be all the glory. Number three, praise the Lord. A one-hour daily evening prayer session continues this week, Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at our various district centers across Lagos and Ota. Through this prophetic season, this church shall continue to grow from glory to glory 
our nation shall be visited and every engaging winner shall be transformed in return. Time, 6 to 7 p.m. Number four, Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. Take advantage of this platform for supernatural advancement in your spiritual life. Time, 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number five, Believers Foundation Class holds this Monday for all new converts in 710 locations caught across Lagos and Ota. All our new converts and new members are admonished to take advantage of this very important platform for spiritual empowerment that will result in victorious living. Time, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number six, praise the Lord. Please be reminded that the annual August International Youth Alive Convention comes up on Tuesday 1st to Saturday 5th, August 2017. <laughs> Theme, Empowered for the Throne. Venue, Faith Tabernacle, Kinalan. To this end, all youth are admonished to pray, plan, and prepare to attend this life-transforming and destiny-changing event. Consequently, there shall be a short briefing after each service today at the Faith Academy Multipurpose Hall. Number seven, Midway Communion Service holds this Wednesday, both here in Canaan Land and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Ota, and Environ. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. Time, 6 p.m. In this service, it is testimony time. Please, if you hear your name, come forward to the altar and share your testimony. Sister Patricia Luke, please come forward to the altar to share your testimony. <laughs> Number eight, Winner's Satellite Fellowship, a house-to-house -house fellowship, holds every Saturday. We're all expected to be part of this for spiritual growth and development. Time, 5 to 6 p.m. And finally, number nine, praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 30th of July, 2017, shall be our encounter with destiny service. It shall also double as our end of month, special Thanksgiving, marriage and children dedication service. Come expecting definite encounters with God via his word. Service schedule is as usual. Jesus is Lord. My case is different. In this service, it is testimony time. Sister Patricia Luke, please come forward for your testimony. Your name first. Praise the Lord. My case is different. My name is Sister Luke Patricia. I've come to return all glory unto the God of this commission for destroying the spell of bedwetting over my, in my life. I've been crying to God for this yoke to be destroyed. And I came last year in one of the communi uh, commu uh, anointing service. And the servant of God said that whatever has gone beyond a while in your life must go. I went home and I cried to God. I said, that he said, whatever beyond a while is a cause. And I said, God, Christ has taken away my cause. Now prove it in my life that at, at, after the end of today, that this must be destroyed. And I say, God, in less than six months, I must see the proof. And then I will come to return the glory to you. And since last year, till now, to date, God has destroyed that spell. He has delivered me. Because of that one night and that night when I prayed that prayer. When I prayed that prayer, I saw something God shows to me. I saw myself, I wanted to cross the, uh, uh, the gutter. And a man quickly ran and put uh, something down, uh, like attachment. And I shout, I say, why do you put that? And as the way I, I start shouting, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. And that's the end of that spell. I just, and I want to thank God again, how God delivered me from a, a poison of an evil, a twisted evil sister that poisoned me and killed a, a, a mother. I thank God because God of this commission is real. When God called me in 2009, he said to me, go to my servant, I have prepared him for you. And then, by that encounter, I came. And suddenly, uh, God gave me an encounter in that, they rushed me to the Gilead, the Earth Center. That's how she came and poisoned me. 
But God destroyed that yoke and has delivered me. I return all the glory unto God. Shout hallelujah. 30 years but waiting destroyed. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please, let's listen to this documented testimony caption, Divine Favor Unlimited. In November 2011, I miraculously got a job I never applied for. I was referred to the company by an unknown source. I started as an operation executive, but was stagnant even when I was overdue for a confirmation. Later, the company began to lay off workers and slash salaries. When I got my letter, I remember that Bishop Oyedepo said, I am too tight, secured. So I approached my managing director, MD, violently after going through my tight booklet. I told him, sir, I cannot afford to have my salary slashed. He asked me what I wanted, and I asked for an incre increase. Immediately, he called the head of human resources, and I was granted 40% increase in my salary. Make it bigger for Jesus. Amen. I was also promoted to the position of a business development manager. I give God all the glory. The testifier is Eloba C. Number two, deliverance from smoking and favor. I thank God for bringing me to this commission. I have been longing to serve God, but something always draws me back. I have been invited for service by a member of this church but I never showed up. I have been moving with bad friends, struggling with smoking and taking hard drugs to make, for, to make me forget the pains of my life. I'm the eldest son of my father and a student in National Institute of Transport Technology, NITT, but I have been maltreated at home. Everything has been hard. My father earns enough, but he only pays for body cream for me in a whole month. I have only two shirts and trousers up to now. Something drew me and my friend into the church when, he praised, when the praise was going on in the church. I attended foundation class and from that moment, God delivered me from those habits. Make it bigger for Jesus. I no longer smoke. I take and take hard drugs. After the covenant day of favor, my father that, used, that refused to care began to favor me. I am happy. I give God all the glory. You are returned with your testimony today. My case is different. This morning is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today worshiping for the first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday like this. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, please would you rise on your feet this morning. Rise on your feet this morning. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. He's worthy of all praise, worthy of all glory, worthy of all honor and all the adoration. Please remain standing. Remain standing in God's presence. Our officials will be putting into your hand a special welcome package. Along with it, they will give you a slip to fill. As soon as you receive both the package and the slip, please be seated and begin to fill that form in the course of this welcome. As soon as you receive your copy, please take your seat and begin to fill the form in the course of this welcome. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle of, over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. I want you to know you have come today to a mountain of God and to a city of refuge. And that means every siege against your life and destiny comes to an end today in the name of Jesus Christ. According to scriptures, the company you keep determines what accompanies you. You have come today to this company of the blessed. The blessings of God here will begin to follow after you from today in the name of Jesus. You have come today to this company of testifiers. Testimony shall become your experience from now in Jesus' name. You have come to this breakthrough company. Breakthrough shall become your identity from now. However, according to scripture, it's only those who are planted in God's house that will flourish there. Therefore, I charge you today, get planted here. Get rooted Engage everyone that comes from this altar in teachings, in instructions, in prophetic direction. And as you put the word of God to work, 
It will begin to work wonders in every department of your life. Just like God did for Obedidom in the scriptures, he engaged with God and within three months, God changed his story. For you also, within the space of three months, as you engage with God upon this mountain, your story shall be changed dramatically in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. Again, all our first time worshipers, please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Bow your head, please, as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for these precious ones that you have drawn by your mighty hand into your presence. You brought them here for a blessing. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we decree them blessed. Whatever they left behind as a concern, we decree it converted to a testimony. And any one of them yet to be saved, we decree today as the day of their salvation. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Please take your seat. Be sure that your form is duly completed clearly and submitted to the official closest to you. Once again, you're welcome and God richly bless you. Give Jesus a big, big hand, everybody. My case is different. In this service, it is offering time. I said it is offering time. If you have not done so, quickly begin to package your worship offering, your tithes, any other seed that you may have brought in honor of Jesus. And as you do so, I'd like us to be reminded of God's word in Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men bring unto your bosom. As you give today, you are activating the release of a speedy harvest in your direction. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Shall we rise on our feet, lift up your seed unto the Lord, presenting it in honor of Jesus with gratitude in your heart, remembering that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Thank him for being in his presence this morning as a giver, as a sower, as a seed sower. Give him thanks. Give him glory. Appreciate him. Glorify the name of the Lord for all that you have, you have received of him. And therefore, return all the glory to him for that which he has put in your hand this morning to bring us a seed into his presence. Will you lift your voice and begin to give God thanks? Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Keep your seed lifted unto the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning, in honor of you, your people have brought their tithes, their offerings, and various seeds in their hands. Therefore, in accordance with your word, let the heavens be open to every tither. Let the blessings keep pouring out upon their lives. Let the devourer be rebuked in their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To every seed sower this morning, let a speedy harvest be released. Let favor answer for each one in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Please, you may be seated. Cast your seat joyfully as we receive the ministry of the Faith Tabernacle Choir. The God of liberation is said to bless somebody this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, we bless you, abundantly, we enthrone you, for all to see, he will lift you, above the earth, Gentiles we come to your life. God, we bless you, God, we bless you, abundantly, he will enthrone you, for all to see, for all to see, he will lift you. Above, above the earth Gentiles Gentiles will come to your life God will bless you God will bless you Above and above and be we have to you For all to for see all to see He will lead, he will lead, you, will lead you Above the above earth Above the earth Gentiles Gentiles will come to your life God will bless you God will bless you Above he will hang on you, you for all to, to see. He will lift you, you. A 
lift up our two hands to heaven and bless the name of the Lord today for the privilege to be in his presence. Would you thank him? He brought you and me up here so we can be blessed in return. Give him thanks for the privilege of being in his presence today. For blessed is the one that God chooses that he calls to approach unto him. He shall be satisfied from the, with the goodness of his house. Give him thanks. Now ask God to speak to you today. Ask him to give you an encounter with the word of favor. Ask him to begin a new thing in your life via his word today. Would you do that? Celebrate him, magnify him, glorify him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Father, thank you today. Lord, send us your word in season. Send us your right word. Let your sent word heal and deliver today. Lord, open a new chapter to everyone's life by your word today. Open the eyes of understanding to behold the wondrous things in your law in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. My case is different. Because I'm redeemed of the Lord and as a covenant child, what affects others is not permitted to affect me. Congratulations, congratulations. Please give the Lord a big hand and get seated. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we started this series of studies the first Sunday of this month, captioned, Unveiling Your Glorious Destiny in Life. By now, every one of us will have come to the point of understanding that by redemption, each of us has a glorious destiny in Christ, which translates to our glorious adventure in life. The same way God rolled away the shame of bedwetting from that precious life that he has had to struggle with for 30 years, every trace of shame and reproach via this teaching will be wiped away from the life of every one of us. Somebody believe that, let me hear your loudest amen. We have not been called unto a life of shame and reproach, or been called unto a life of glory and virtue. Second Peter chapter one and verse three. Therefore, from this month onward, no trace of shame and reproach shall be found in anyone's life anymore. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. this redemptive package is real, but it never becomes a reality in our lives until we can see it from the scriptures. Because God is only committed to give to us as far as our eyes can see. God's mirror, God's word is the mirror of the destiny of every believer. This is where what redemption has made of us can be found. Jesus found what was written of him in the volume of the books. This is where God's plan and purpose for us is located. So as far as we can see is what God is committed to deliver. Genesis 13 and verse 14 and 15, God said to Abraham, now lift up your eyes and look northwards, southwards, eastwards, and westward. For all the land without says, unto you will I give it. Say with me, I have a glorious destiny in Christ. 
And because glory is the cure for shame and reproach, I have been redeemed from a life of shame and reproach. I shall not see shame again in my life. So whatever represents shame around anyone's life, in the name of Jesus Christ, it is turned to a testimony today. Whatever makes people ask you, where is your God? You will not locate such again in your life. But on the other side, on the other hand, the Bible says that we brethren as Isaac are the children of promise. And who was Isaac? Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. He went forward, he worked strong, he became very great. And the Philistines envied him. You have been redeemed unto an enviable destiny, not a pitiable one. Therefore, whatever makes for pity around your life, God has vowed to turn into testimonies of envy. Remember the people he predestinated, he called, and those he called, he justified, and those he justified, he glorified. And that's you. Your justification is ordained to culminate in glorification. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, no one will ask you anymore in your life, where is your God? <laughs> Somebody believe that, let me hear you loud and say, but among other, other things, every believer has a destiny of health and vitality in Christ. Say with me, I have a destiny of health and vitality in Christ. Say it louder. I have a destiny of health and vitality in Christ. Now, Let's look at the root of our destiny of health and vitality. We saw Jesus in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 4 and 5. That's Jesus in prophecy. That's the offer of atonement in prophecy. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our souls. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was brief for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and by stripes we are healed. That's just an insight to the gruesome price that Jesus had to pay to set you and I free, not only from sin, also from sickness and disease. The word grief in Isaiah 53 verse 4 is, I mean, talks about sickness and the word sorrow talks about pains. So Jesus was smitten to take away sicknesses and pains from our life. Peter referred to it. 1 Peter 2.24 he said by whose stripes he wired so the price for our total head was fully paid at Calvary. So sickness and disease has no more legal hold on our lives. In the name of Jesus, you shall not suffer the assault of sickness and disease again in your life. In Mark chapter 8 and verse 17, himself took our infirmity and bare our sicknesses. Himself took our, it's just referencing the same chapter of scripture. He took, that's where I got my deliverance from, 1979. He took, he wasn't coming to take, lest he forget. He already took. The price for my health was fully paid before I was sick. So sickness came late. The price for your total health has been fully paid before that sickness attacked your body. So sickness already fully late. 
Therefore, in the name of Jesus, every assault of sickness on your life returns back to sender today. And John said, God wishes above all things that we prosper and be in him, even as our soul prospereth. So spirituality guarantees hell delivered. Jesus is not only our savior from sin, he's also the savior of our body from sickness and disease. Ephesians 5.23 he said, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. You know, Satan will forever contend for our body. Like he was contending for the body of Moses. But Jesus is the anointed savior of our body. Everyone that encountered him was made perfectly whole. Matthew 14 and verse 36. The anointing of Christ has unlimited capacity in dealing with every assault of sickness and disease. Therefore, today, whatever sickness or disease followed you to church will never return back home with you. You know, Jesus Christ, anointed with Holy Ghost and with power, he went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. How many of them? All. Yeah, he healed them all, and he healed them all, and he healed them all. Healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. Whatever sickness or disease or pain or discomfort or depression that follow you to church today, will never return back home with you. This is why we need to understand the root of our freedom from sicknesses and diseases. Is in the price that Christ paid, which remains eternally valid. Whatever the Lord doeth, it shall be what? Forever. So your healing, health, and wholeness shall be forever. You receive it, let me hear your loudest amen. What must I do then to actualize this awesome heritage in my life? Every provision in the kingdom has set conditions to be met for anyone who is interested in enjoying those provisions. What must I do to enjoy my redemptive package of health and vitality. Number one, keep feeding on the world the same way you feed on food. Keep feeding on the word of God. God's word is the carrier of God's nature. The more we feed on the word, the more of his nature we imbibe. Keep feeding on the world. Whereby are given unto us, 2 Peter 1 4, these exceeding great and precious promises that by this we might be partakers of the divine nature. We partake of divine nature through the great and precious promises of scriptures. We partake of divine nature. We partake of divinity, which is the seal of our dominion on the earth. Keep feeding on the world. It will enhance 
the divine content in your being, thereby establishing your dominion over the situations and circumstances of life, including sicknesses and diseases. Amen. Keep feeding on the world. Keep feeding on the world. You know, the entrance of his world give it light. And the dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. For that light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a true light that lighted everyone that came into this world. John 1 5 and John 1 9. Keep feeding on the world. Keep feeding on the world. We also understand that. Feeding on the walls tears joy on the inside. Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy walls were found and I did eat them. And they became the joy and the joy of my heart. And in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 10. The joy of the Lord shall be your strength. The word of God tears joy from inside. Which facilitates healthy living. Joy is a covenant therapy for healthy living. The joy of the Lord springs health and vitality inside people. Keep feeding on the world. It will enhance your divine nature content. Praise God. It will illuminate your insight to dominate the forces of darkness that gets people sick and afflicted. It will steer joy that facilitates healthy living. Keep feeding on the world. Keep feeding on the world. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You want to live a healthy life? Keep feeding on the world. Number two, which draws from number one, is keep speaking healthy words. For out of the abundance of the mouth, of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Matthew 12, 34. Keep speaking healthy words. Keep speaking healthy words. Keep speaking healthy words. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Keep speaking healthy words. Life and death are in the power of the song. You will always have what you say. The mountains are real, but what you say determines the outcome or the impact of those mountains on your life. Not just speaking this time, speaking boldly, drawing confidence from the revelation of the truth concerning your total health package in Christ. This is vital. They were there speaking boldly in the Lord. And he gave witness to the word of his grace, gave them to the word of his grace by granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. They were not just speaking anyhow. They were speaking boldly, confidently. And God was turning their situation to testimony. Remember, Mark eleven twenty three: 23, you shall have whatsoever you say. And so, the word admonishes, let him that is weak say what? What should he say? Should he say, I'm weak? I'm even weaker than yesterday. I'm, in, I'm at my weakest point. Let him say what? I'm strong. Joel chapter 3 and verse 10. Let him say, I am strong. Let him say, I am strong. Let him say, I am strong. In the name of Jesus, you will never be robbed of your total health package in Christ anymore. <laughs> Number three, embrace a godly life. Give no place to the devil. 
In Mark chapter 2, verse 5, Jesus saw that man that was sick of palsy. He said, Thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Pointing to the fact that that affliction had its root in sin. Praise God. In John chapter 5, we saw the man that was sick for 38 years. And Jesus, after healing him, met him in verse 14 and said, Go and say no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Embrace a godly life to sustain your health and vitality package in Christ. Embrace a godly life. Thank you, Jesus. Now, today is our covenant day of favor. And I'll be showing you what I consider by revelation as the master key to a world of unending favor, ever growing favor, ever increasing favor. We take our text on this note from Psalm 102 and verse 13 to 15. The Bible said, Thou, he said, Thou shalt arise, talking about God, and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor Zion, yea, the set time is come. Now, wait a minute. What is Zion? Zion is the church of Christ in a figure. How do you say that? Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22. But ye are come to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, and to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn or the church of Christ, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect. Now, we can clear from that passage that Zion simply translates to be the church. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon your church, for the time to favor her, yet the same time is come, because thy servant taketh pleasure in the stones of the church and favor everything that matters to that kingdom. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. That means an outpouring of fearful favor. Now, watch it. Before this three months operation is over, operation prayer for life, fearful favor will land on many lives. Unimaginable favor will land on many lives. Now, this is the truth. Until you are set to serve God in truth and in deed, and the interest of his kingdom, the time to favor you is not in view. There is no favor in the kingdom that is free. Favor has to be entreated before it's ever released. Psalm 35 and verse, 45 and verse 12. It said, and the daughter of Zion shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. Favor has to be provoked. Favor has to be entreated by our obedience. By what? Our what is God saying to you? Do seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these favors shall come upon your life. Praise God. So, simple instruction. You want to experience unimaginable favor? Let the advancement of the kingdom of God on the earth become your priority for living. And all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you by divine favor. Amen. Whatever is added to you without you asking for it is called favor. It's called favor. 
is called favor. Amazing testimonies abound in this church today among many brethren on explosive favor from heaven. I got a job without knowing how it got, but I, I didn't apply to anybody. They just called me up and said, come over here. All kinds. All kinds of favor is provoked by our genuine commitment to seeking first the advancement of the kingdom of God and all its very demand. That brings you and I into favor with God and man. Now, let's look at a few pictures. Israel was struggling for liberty. They have lived there for 430 years. There was no way out. But suddenly, they returned back to God. We want to serve our God. We have heard from our fathers of old what mighty things you did for them. We are back to you, Jesus. They said, are, are you back to me, son? They said, we are back to you. Now Moses comes. I've heard their cry. I've seen their heart. They are set for me. I want to change their story. And then Moses came up and God told him, he said, you are going forth to bring these people out. Amen. Out of their penury, out of their misfortune. Amen. Amen. And I will give them favor. Yes, sir. Because they are set to serve me. And when they depart, they shall not go empty. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? So you can see how service connects you to favor. Let my people go that they may serve me. That was the call eight different times. Let them go that they may serve me. Let them go. The time to favor them has finally come. Let them go. I want to change their story. When you are out for God, God is out for you. You can't be out of God and run out of favor. When you are out to serve God, he's out to set you free. He's out to decorate your life. He's out to change your story. Has God changed? Now, come on. Now, we have another picture in Christ. The Bible said, Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Jesus speaking said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? Must. Come and say must. When serving God becomes a must, you are said to make the most of your life. When serving God becomes your willing must, 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 you are set to make the most out of your life. Now, in verse 52, so he said, Luke 2, 49 slash 52, in verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And in favor with God and man. Oh, being about your father's business, therefore, brings you into favor with God and man. Simple equation. That's the key to it. If they will obey and serve him, they, will, they shall what? Spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. They will live their life under the showers of his favor. They won't see pleasure anymore in their lives. That's the key to it. Please embrace it. Of all the laws of assessing divine favor, this is the anchor law. Until you begin to favor the things of the kingdom, the time to favor you is not in view. Until you begin to favor the things of the kingdom of God, the time to favor you and I is not in view. It's not in view. <laughs> there was a man in scriptures in Luke chapter 7, verse 1 to 4. They said, this man loved our nation. He has built us a synagogue. It's worthy of your help. Jesus said, okay, let's go. Jesus will always respond to anyone promoting his kingdom. Any day, any time, your life will never run favor dry again. I gave my life to Christ 48 years ago. I discovered Matthew 6, 33, 41 years ago. I've been trading that secret till now without the first regret in my pursuit. I've never been out of any service on head ground in 37 years of ministry. It's not might, it's not strength, it's grace. But grace multiplies by knowledge. Amen. Grace multiplies by knowledge. When I was talking about 
what must I do to stay healthy and strong? The Bible says they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. You don't get strong for nothing. It is from the altar of prayer that we go from strength to strength. Moses, a prayer warrior at 120, his natural force was underbated. It's from the altar of prayer we go from strength to strength. Psalm 84, verse 7. Praise God. I mean, Moses at 120 tracked his way to the mountain where God buried him. Yes. Amen. He fasted, recorded in scriptures, twice 40 days of eating and drinking nothing. Amen. Amen. The first one at the age of 90, they are about, the second one at the age of 110. Amen. And fasted 40 days, unusual strength, garnered from the altar of prayer. That's why this is your opportunity to come out of your feebleness Amen. and come into the realm of strength. Amen. Because it takes strength to command exploits. It takes what? Strength. And the end time church is an army of men and women of exploits. As a strong people, said the battle in array. Praise God. So, so come out of your weakness. Can't be behaving. I can't be behaving like a pregnant woman. A man cannot be pregnant. So let's come out of it. He brought them also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Every siege of feebleness and weakness in anyone's life, I declare it cost today. Yeah. At 80, you will still be strong and going. Yeah. At 100, your natural force shall not be abated. Yeah. But the prayer altar is the service station for growing strength. Amen. 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 And as he prayed, he was transfigured before them. It is on the mountain of prayer that we get transfigured from one level of strength to another. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. And as he prayed, the fashion of his continent was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. There was transformation, transfiguration taking place on the altar of prayer. So, enjoy. 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 Let prayer become your breath. Jesus. Lord Jesus, everyone calls sick in this church. I pray for their healing today, Lord. Set them free. Lord, it's just like breathing. Like breathing. You are not struggling. It has become your way of life. <laughs> That's how to go from strength to strength. Now listen to me. We serve God in several ways. One, we serve God from the altar of prayer, like Anna, who was serving God with prayers and fasting night and day. We serving the seek the interest of his kingdom on the altar of prayer. Praying for souls to be saved, praying for souls to be established in the faith, praying for new converts to begin to connect and grow from strength to strength. Praying for the needs of members of the church to be met. Praying for your territories to be taken over for Christ. Amen. Praying for continuous church growth. You are serving God. You know, you don't... The Bible talks about the prayer answering God. We should also be conversant with the prayer rewarding God. Your requests are answered. Your service is rewarded. So most of us are only used to prayer of requests, making demands on God every day. But serving the interests of his kingdom on the altar of prayers entitles you to rewards, Amen. not to answers. That's right. And rewards will cover all the needs of your life, known and unknown. Yes, sir. Maybe somebody has set a trap for you on your way home right now, and he rewards you because you must live long. Yes, so he busted the trap before you got there. Yeah. And we serve God through soul winning. Now, listen to me. The prayer ministry is every believer's ministry. How many believers? Believe that all men ought always to pray and not to fail. Not apostles and prophets and pastors. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. He told the entire church, in the, the church of Thessalonians, he said, pray without season. 
Jesus taught us when you pray, not if you pray, it's everybody's ministry. Now, we come to serving God through soul winning and divorce. Soul winning is every believer's ministry. How many? We are new creatures. We are called with a ministry of reconciliation. And as we engage in that, we are now ambassadors of Christ, reconciling the world back to God. So it's every believer's ministry. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, you are new creatures. Verse 19, you are now ambassadors of Christ and has given you the ministry of reconciliation. We are ongoing. Praise God. Everybody has a ministry of reconciliation. So let's get on. In John 15, 16, the Bible says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I should go forth and bring forth fruit, and your fruit may have mine. Every believer's ministry, so many, is every believer's ministry. We serve God through our finances, because my kingdom through prophecy shall yet be spread abroad. We give towards the promotion of his kingdom to keep our heavens open. In Haggai chapter one, verse five to 14, he said, the heaven over you is short from the earth. Why? Because my house lies in rain and you run everyone to his own house. So not only Titan opens the heaven, kingdom promotion also opens the heaven. The plus in Titan is that he rebukes the devourer for your sake. So it's your insurance. Praise God. So we promote the kingdom of God through our givers. And then it keeps the heaven over us open for financial blessings. Now listen to me. You have an open Eden platform to enjoy unending dimension of favor all the days of your life. Just plug yourself into it. And that is it. We serve God also by minding the state of the needy among us. Minding the needs of the poor among us. Servicing the needs of the people that are helpless, the sick, and the hopeless. And he rewards you by not allowing you to be a victim of what you are helping to sort out. For any good thing that any man does the same, he shall receive from God. You better ask somebody from sickness, you won't see sickness. He said, blessed is the man that considereth the poor. He said, the Lord shall deliver, he will not deliver, I mean, shall deliver him in the time of trouble. He said, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He shall be blessed on the earth, and he will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. And verse 3, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of language, because he's helping somebody out. He will make all his bed in his sickness. You can't make a bed that somebody is sleeping on. You may get out of your bed, enough is enough. Get off that bed, enough is enough. Because you won't let the sick die when there is power in your hand to help. He won't watch you die. He won't watch you die. He won't watch you die. That's it. That's how these things play out. Welcome to a world of unending favor. Yeah. Welcome to a world of unending favor. Yeah. May today mark the end of every air of misfortune around your life. May today mark the end of every air of misfortune around your life. May today mark the end of every air of misfortune around your life. An undying commitment to kingdom advancement and divorce entitles us to ever flowing favor. You can miss out of favor pursuing after God and the interest of his kingdom. This is your day. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Amen. Because nothing succeeded to keep you away from church today Nothing will succeed to stop the favor of God from flowing in your life. Because no force of the element succeeded to keep you away from being in church today 
no force from hell shall stop the favor of God from flowing in your life. One more time, give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Please get seated. You are out here in the fourth service, and you are not born again yet. That is the number one step into a word of favor. For thou, O Lord, we bless the righteous. The book of Psalm, chapter 5, verse 12. With favor will thou compass him as with a shield. Every child of God is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and is entitled to a life of favor. So if you are here, you want to be born again, you want to become a child of God, I'd like to pray with you. You want your sins forgiven. You want to be born again. You want to become a child of favor. Walk away from being a child of misfortune. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wherever you are standing, I'm praying for you there where you are. God bless somebody else is standing up. Beyond all the benefits on the earth is eternity with Christ in heaven. You want to surrender your life to Christ today, please stand to your feet wherever you are. Stand to your feet. Now, everyone that has done that, please move to the nearest. Church officials are there to welcome you and help you fill out your sleeps in good time. Now, there are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. But you are once saved, but at the time there was a disconnect between you and God, it's important to reconnect back to God. Wherever you are today, you want to reconnect back to Jesus, can I ask you to please stand on your feet? I'll pray for you at the same time. You want to reconnect back to God today, please stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. You want to reconnect back to God today, please stand to your feet. God bless you. You want to reconnect back to God today, please stand to your feet. Can I ask you to move also at the same time to the nearest eye to where you are? Some church officials are there to assist you fill out your car. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, by way of reminder, next Sunday is our Encounter with Destiny service. Our life is in form of a book that's made up of ch several chapters. God will be opening the next chapter to your life next Sunday Amen. by a prophetic word from heaven that will be sent to you in person. So get ready for it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Amen. All of us who are standing, please, would you bow your heads for prayers? You may complete your forms later on if you have not. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Make me a child of God. Make me a child of God. You rose on the third day to justify me. Justify me from all this sin and make me a child of God. Restore me back to the faith and keep me going. Lord Jesus, I thank you for receiving me. I thank you for restoring me and I thank you for saving my soul. Amen. Now be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And may the grace that found you today keep you for life. I pray that today marks the end of your struggles with the issues of life. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big hand for this precious soul. Now, just a minute, before you get down to sit, we had a testimony read to us today. A young man found himself in a company that corrupted his life and got into drinking, got into taking hard drugs. Now, came into church like this by divine arrangement, got saved, and went to Believer Foundation class on Monday. From that time, his taste for drugs died. 
His taste for drink died. He's now a bona fide child of God living a triumphant life. Please be reminded of the Believer Foundation class, specially packaged for new converts. We have it going in seven and ten locations across Lagos and Nutter. Our team will call you and give you the one nearest to where you live by the address you put in there. It's 6 to 7.30 p.m. and you go for only two Mondays. You're empowered to live a triumphant Christian life. Don't miss that for anything. You'll be glad you did. Jesus sets people free here to the utmost. As he sets you free, he sets you free forever. That shall be your portion. Every deadly habit will lose their grip from you. You'll be serving God in liberty and freedom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Shall we all rise, please? Some people will look to the sky and say, I can't go to church today. But you look at the sky and say, no matter what, I'm getting to God's presence. No matter what, God's favor will pursue you from now. Some fellow must have concluded yesterday, I won't go to church today. Amen. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that observeth the cloud shall not reap. But you said, no matter what, I'm going to the house of my God. Well, no matter what, you will never run out of favor. Therefore, from this day, the same favor that follows this commission continues to follow you for life. Yeah. Ours is a highly favored family. Yes. The winner's family is a highly favored family. Yes. We have never been, why? There has never been a need to. Therefore, from today, the favor that rescues a man from begging is your favor. Yeah. We have never, never known a better last year. From today, your life shall remain on an ever increasing frequency. here works. The best student in Nigeria on SSC came from Faith, Tab Faith Academy. Best. Best in Jam 330. Best 335. Best in YF 9A1 from this place. Everything works here. Therefore, from today, everything begins to work in your life. Today, Landmark University is in partnership with the Space Agency of Nigeria. Everything here flies. Covenant University, art, Two specialized research areas, oh, yes. and the world is gone STEM. Mm -hmm. Nobody's running around with mm -hmm. all these other things. They're running with engineering, mathematics, and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, became first globally in two research specialized areas. Globally. Everything here works. Yes, yes. The favor that makes it work comes on your life today. Amen. You will never suffer a setback again. The same way those children emerge at Faith Academy, Kenan Land here, the best resource since inception was the one for this year. Not one person left out. Everybody, university said, everybody across board. From today, Nothing in your life goes down anymore. Saul found himself 
among the prophets and they began to prophesy with them. Whatever favor works on this commission begins to work in your life from now. Lot only went with Abraham and the covenant blessing on Abraham came upon him. May every covenant blessing on this commission become manifest in your life. I have told you before, as a law leader, who speaks to me? The greatest men and women in every field of human endeavor shall find their greatest concentration here. And you are one of them. 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 And you are one of them. In the name of Jesus Christ, place your hand upon your forehead. Any mark contrary to your rights in Christ that the enemy may have put on your head, it is today removed. I decree that the favor procured for you in redemption begins to have full manifestations in your life. Today marks the end of every air of misfortune on your life. That hand constitutes the mark of Christ. He said, let no man trouble me because I bear the marks of Christ on my body. From today, with this mark on your life, misfortune shall begin to clear the way for you. Now put that hand on your chest. No one ever runs out of favor with a heart for God. David, a man after God's own heart, said, by thy favor, you have made my mountain to strong. A heart for God will always procure favor from God. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. <laughs> Does it enter the heart of any man? What God has reserved for them that love him. Now I pray that from today, the heart of every one of us will continue to pant after God. We continue to pant after the matter of his kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, this week marks the beginning of your season of favor. That season will follow you all through the year. It will go beyond the year and follow you into next year. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Lift up your two hands and celebrate Jesus and give him glory and praise. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Now, just before we share the goodness, how many are happy to hear that CRK has been restored back to status quo? Are you happy? That was announced by our Minister of Education, who said by himself that it's just like trying to mix water and oil, that the two won't work. In the same vein, the sinister plan to introduce Arabic language into the University General Studies curriculum will not work. <laughs> this week, that also shall be revoked. <laughs> this is a multicultural, multi-religious nation. Yes. Yes. We have no problem with Islam and Christianity. We've been living together all our life. Yes. But there are some elements, some individuals, who are poised for war. But I decree today, Nigeria shall not see war. Yes. Our land shall no more drink blood. Yes. We shall remain a one-entity nation. Yes. 
Now, let me ask you the question. Is Nigeria a religious state? No. What state is Nigeria? Is Nigeria a Christian state? No. What state are we? Is Nigeria an Islamic state? No. What state are we? This is the question National Assembly should ask. Are we a secular state or a religious state? And answer it from our, your representative stance. Yes, you are representing the citizens in that house. Yes, ask the people who ask this. They want the next election. They want to have the next election. But I'm after the next generation. Yes, sir. We will not destroy the future of our generation. Yes, Until we rewrite the constitution, let everybody be cautious. What is Arabic language doing in management science? Mm -mm. <laughs> that you can't do accounting, you can't do finance, you be without Arabic language, how, where? No! I love the write-ups of uh, two gentlemen, I mean one gentlewoman and one gentleman. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You know, the reason why they don't talk about gentle women is that women are naturally gentle. <laughs> but they have to talk of gentlemen, and this church is full of gentlemen, isn't it? Hallelujah. Beginning from your father. I'm one of the gentlest people in this world. It won't work. The world has gone digital. Yes, sir. We can't go back to the Stone Age. It won't work. It's adding up. Look, if you do Arabic, then we'll do Hebrew and Aramaic. Mm -hmm. That's our root. Mm -hmm. No, no, let's go straight. Now, listen to me. Nigeria shall not see war. Anyone who is thirsty of blood will go and find his own country. You mean I must learn Arabic to earn a degree in banking? You know, I mustn't go to university without learning Arabic language? No. No. Now see, these are all steps taken to confront the sensibility of others. We are not dummies. No. Now, in the name of Jesus, every man and woman hanging about on how to create unrest, may the Lord send them to Sinai. Nigeria is delivered. Yeah. There shall be no insurrection. Yeah. There shall be no shooting of guns. Yeah. The peace of God will abide in this country. Yeah. The lovers of peace will prosper in this country. He yeah. said, pray for the peace of your Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love her. How many love Nigeria here? How many want to see one Nigeria on? That's what you shall see. Does anybody here want war? No. You want bloodshed? No. You want crisis and turmoil? No. We shall not have any of them. Amen. Shall we together share the goodness, give it to your neighbor right there? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in presence of the Lord forever and ever. Now give that to yourself right now. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Congratulations. My case is different. Congratulations, congratulations. Let's move out fast.